Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. It's really a free way of supporting the the channel and it really helps the YouTube algorithm and gets the uh, quality content out to the traders that really would uh, benefit from uh, this type of analysis. So um, getting into really the uh, the, the week ahead um, and looking at potential fundamental catalysts uh, and as fundamentals are really the, the drivers of a uh, medium to long term price. So just zooming into the week ahead. So all eyes are uh, turning on the US uh, employment report next week, which will probably add to signs of gradual job recovery, as well as worldwide manufacturing PMI survey and an OPEC um, meeting that is expected to offer guidance on the production plan. So what it is, is that the uh, the US employment is a, um, I guess, um, an indication, an indicator, an early indicator of how the economy is doing. So high employment and low unemployment um, you know, and, and, and uh, that should really um, uh, keep the Fed on track when it comes to potentially hiking interest rates, which I'll get into um, a bit later on when we're talking about the, uh, the dollar index. Elsewhere, key data to watch for includes US foreign trade balance and construction spending, UK first quarter GDP and current account updates. Now, the UK first quarter GDP is pretty much known as three uh, GDP numbers that come out. There's the, I think the preliminary, the um, the second um, uh, estimate and then the final. So um, we already know this is pretty much the final GDP. We pretty much know what the first what the first quarter data was. Um, we really want to watch the market moving news. News is really the preliminary um, news that comes out as far as the uh, the data that comes out and uh, what we know about the, uh, the 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 GDP at the moment is already pretty much known. So it's not really going to be a market moving event, in my opinion. Uh, Eurozone inflation and business morale. Again, inflation is going to be uh, is really the topic of discussion and really the market focus at the moment and business morale. Japan's uh, Tankan survey, industrial production and retail sales and Australia um, foreign trade figures. So um, a few market moving events going on uh, this week. So let's get into the technicals and some uh, some deeper fundamentals and uh, starting off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index and the, the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength again weakness against um, against other major currencies like the euro, the yen, the pound and the Australian dollar and some others. And um, pretty much from the technical analysis perspective, we've, we came up to this uh, supply zone last week. And uh, let me just get my, uh, my pen tool, brush tool. And uh, we had, you know, just a, pretty much a little bit of a sell off. But the overall path of least resistance, I guess, at the moment is to the upside. And I think the market really is waiting for um, uh, waiting for the Federal Reserve um, to, to really kind of um, be a bit more, I would say a bit more hawkish, but waiting for the data to support the narrative. So we had the surprise last week, right, which was the, the hawkish uh, tone in, in, in the FOMC. And now the market, I guess, is waiting for the data to support the narrative. And what is the data? The data is uh, unemployment, right? So uh, the Fed's Rosenberg says 2022 uh, rate hike in play as job market heals, yeah? So the Federal Reserve might consider an interest rate hike from near zero as soon uh, as late 2022, as labor market reaches full employment and inflation is at the central bank's goal, Federal Reserve uh, Bank of Boston President Eric Rosengren uh, said the criteria is that we have a sustainable inflation rate, which is 2%, this is their target, or above, and that we are at full employment. This is the key full employment yeah rosengren said uh, in the, in a broadcast interview with yahoo finance i do expect that it's quite possible that we will see that by the end of the year 
but it does depend on whether the economy progresses strongly as I'm expecting. And that is the key. The economy has to uh, support the rate hikes. Central banks don't want to just randomly hike rates if the economy won't can't support rate hikes. And it's not just the Federal Reserve. All central banks, or say all central banks, but a, uh, a lot of central banks are in the same uh, uh, predicament when it comes to uh, monetary policy, right? So peak central bank support marks new phase for world recovery, right? So after the, the, the global pandemic, um, there's a, there is a global recovery. And so the pandemic recovery is in a new phase as multiple central banks start or plot the withdrawal of emergency stimulus gradually shifting from peak support and opening up divergences in international policy making that is in extremely important divergences in international policy making because if a central bank is hiking rates looking to hike rates and another central bank is potentially behind the curve when it comes to hiking rates and they're looking to hold rates and wait and see you really want to and this is not financial advice but um, money will tend to flow into um, the central banks where the policy is ahead of the curve and they're hiking sooner rather than later so the federal reserves crab walk towards the mo um, uh, towards the moment it reduces its aid has cemented the global pivot with counterparts in the UK, Canada, Norway, Sweden, South Korea, and New Zealand among those sketching out maps to uh, to a pullback. So, again, just understanding that the global support, all the money printing that was supporting, you know, furlough businesses, the country, etc., is being withdrawn, which should actually have a positive effect on currencies as far as it should create demand, as well as hiking rates has. Um, a uh, uh, the effect of um, of creating demand for the currency simply because uh, uh, investors I guess will want to put their money into a higher yielding currency or assets over um, a lower yielding one right um, so what on the face of it that's the, the the basic premise of it there are nuances to that. But going back to the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve, the reason why prices went higher was not because there was some technical reason. It was literally because the Federal Reserve are now a bit hawkish. But just be careful because the data has to support the narrative. And if the data comes out this week, jobs come out this week and they disappoint, then what happens is, is that that 2022 right the 2022 potential uh, target late 2022 for a rate hike may be then delayed until 2023 and then that obviously pushes expectations for a rate hike further into the future which then means that less you know investors are going to necessarily want to uh, you know feel the need to necessarily buy dollars now and then you could see potential you know downside so the data always has to support the narrative when it comes to um, buying the rumor anyways if you do feel that uh, you want to get long on the dollar at the moment there is really no demand zones unless we kind of create a new higher high and then wait for a pullback and then into this would be the new demand zone here and then we're looking for long trades if not you're looking for a pullback all the way down into that uh, 90.5 uh, area before looking at long trades if you want to get long on the dollar if you're looking for uh, short trades then I think um, any pullback into that supply zone will be uh, a decent short trade but again looking for potential catalysts and reasons as to why you want to get uh, short on the dollar um, from a from a fundamental and possibly risk sentiment perspective, moving on to the uh, dollar yen and the dollar yen last week we did come up into this uh, this supply zone which was a market a previous market high. So prices were expensive here. The premise about supply and demand or understanding supply and demand is understanding why is you know if it was expensive in March what is going to make uh, what, why do investors determine the exchange rate to be expensive here? If the US dollar are looking to hike rates, for example, 
yeah, uh, sooner than the Japanese yen, the Bank of Japan, then in fact the market has to price that in, yeah. So doesn't make sense to just go short here based on the technical pattern because there's no technical patterns that are going to work in the face of fundamentals and understanding value and monetary policy. This is just not going to work. The market think that this is a bargain right here for the dollar and the prices will go higher. So the path of least resistance at the moment is to the upside. You can see what's been happening uh, since really, I would say mid April to the end of April. And again, there has been a major shift in monetary policy. So um, for me, it's really about potential pullbacks into certain demand zones. So that would be where I would look for any kind of long trades, pull back into the 110s, 109s, and then look for potential long trades. Again, if the data supports the narrative, um, so that has to be um, you know, a, a requirement. Don't just necessarily just buy or sell. You have to keep you know, your fingers on the pulse when it comes to understanding uh, the fundamental analysis and what uh, the big money and the smart money is likely to do. Um, if risk off does come into the market, meaning there's some fear, uncertainty and doubt, the Japanese yen does benefit from a risk off environment. And this would then look like actually quite a really uh, decent um, uh, short trade. But for now, um, there are risk events, but I think the market is, um, is kind of shrugging them off for now as the, the, the vaccine rollout um, should protect, um, you know, uh, um, citizens from, you know, new Delta variants, etc. Even though there have been, you know, certain lockdowns and that. But I do think that um, for now, until um, it really is front page news, I do think that we are in probably more of a risk on environment than a risk off environment. So again, path of least resistance to the, uh, to the upside for now. Moving on to the dollar Swiss, same thing as the dollar yen really. Um, my bias is really to the upside. So I'm looking for long trades. So if prices can make higher highs, pull back into a nice demand zone. This would be demand, then that's really my preference. Um, but again, depends on what happens with the dollar and the, what the data is, is saying. If not, then you're looking for pullback into the 90 uh, cent area. If you are looking for short trades, again, the question is, why do you think that the Swiss franc is undervalued? Why is it a bargain at this uh, this price point against the US dollar? That's the question you have to always ask yourself. And uh, for me, the again, the Swiss franc, the Swiss National Bank are very dovish, not looking to raise rates anytime soon. They're pretty much the last of the central banks to want to raise rates or looking to raise rates. So um, I think, again, the path of these resistance is to the upside. Again, moving on to next currency pair, which is the dollar CAD. Now, dollar CAD, uh, the, the CAD is actually, the Bank of Canada is actually uh, ahead of the um the, 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 the Federal Reserve when it comes to potentially hiking rates. So um, the uh, for me, not necessarily a pair I would like to trade, but um, uh, just on that, um, that idea, if I was looking for any kind of direction, I would be looking for short trades. Any pullbacks into supply for me are short trades. There are easier trades. You really wanna trade currency pairs that are diverging or converging meaning that one is potentially hiking rates, one is cutting rates, right? Or for example, the uh, base currency is cutting rates and maybe the um, the quote currency is hiking rates. So convergence and divergence trades. To, to, to trade uh, uh, pairs where both central banks are hiking or both are potentially cutting or hawkish or dovish isn't necessarily the best idea in the world. Um, you really wanna look for this because this is what is going to show you where the, the market is trending. This is price discovery. This tends to be um, generally tends to be ranging market territory. So again, for me, um, not necessarily the best, but um, there is a slight bit of divergence when it comes to the bank um, Canada and the Canadian economy uh, being ahead of the US economy. So my bias would be to the short side. If you're looking for long trades, probably look for maybe a pullback down to um, the uh, one to one fifty area um, as a to get long on the um, the, the dollar and uh, short the Canadian dollar, but there are definitely easier trades out there. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and um, 
New Zealand dollar, one of my uh, one of my buy pairs, not necessarily against the US dollar, but against some other currencies like the uh, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc. Prices did come down into uh, this demand zone last week. We did get a bit of a sell off, which I was saying to the members of the private Discord group was a buying opportunity, and you saw pretty much this week prices come back. Lots of uh, bank forecasts really kind of focusing on uh, long. Uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar um, price up to I think the, the maybe third quarter might be around the 73 areas. So for me, any pullbacks into a zone, um, into that zone now, I think is a decent buying opportunity if we can get it. There is a bit of demand right there. Demand there. So a bit of pullback into this demand zone and then looking for potential uh, long trades short trades if you feel that the um the, the the us dollar should get stronger but again there are easier trades to uh, buy the us dollar against i'm not necessarily a, a fan of this uh, currency pair uh, at all moving on to the pound dollar and the pound dollar again i think is more even steven if if um looking at the uh the, the fundamentals I think maybe the uh, the pound for me is again I think it's a buy but just not against potentially the dollar I'm not necessarily too sure about the uh, the dollar I'm not saying that you know you shouldn't or whether you should again not financial advice but there are much easier trades fundamentally to uh, if you want to, to buy the, the the pound for example um, would you buy it necessarily against the, the dollar who are also looking to high crates right now going into some fundamentals about the uh, the pound. The Bank of England warns against tightening too soon as inflation surges. So the Bank of England pushes back against speculation that a surge in UK inflation means it's preparing to boost interest rates, saying the economy still needs support to recover from the pandemic. So again, it's the same theme as the Federal Reserve. They're all doing the same thing, but they need the uh, economy to recover because if you hike interest rates too soon, it could really you know hinder the economy if um if uh, if businesses um uh, uh, are still struggling and still require support so they're in a wait and see at the moment they're in a wait and see um situation you know the central bank warned against premature tightening uh toughening its language on the need to maintain stimulus so they are still supporting the economy there's still furlough programs uh going on as well the remarks contrasted with a sharp increase in the bank's outlook for inflation which officials now see peaking at three percent a half point higher than their forecast just six weeks ago so inflation at the moment is uh, is running away and you would really expect it kind of to uh, go higher simply because of the amount of money printing that goes on but again what this what the central bank is is worried about is hiking rates too soon they don't want to hike rates and potentially hurt um, businesses and the economic recovery. So they're in the same boat as the uh, as, as the Federal Reserve, waiting for you know certain economic signs, which potentially could mean that we could be entering into some sort of range. For example, this being the market high, right? So this was the market high. This was an expensive exchange rate. This may be um, this was you know a bargain here, so we could actually enter into a potential ranging market state. So let's see what happens there. Um, again, for me, uh, buying um, the, the the pound wouldn't necessarily be the the, the best, uh, or the pound dollar would, would be the best uh, pair to trade. But if you do want to get um, long, then looking for pullbacks into that zone there, or just below. Uh, before getting long looking at any kind of short trades and buying the uh the dollar uh then you're looking for a pullback into this zone even though i don't really like this zone um uh, uh too much from a from a supply zone perspective yes it's got nice little hard out there but um uh i'd probably maybe wait for some sort of uh uh, potential stop hunt with some fundamental catalyst above the market before getting involved in that um, so yeah that's pretty much the analysis for the uh, the pound dollar and moving on to 
the euro dollar and before we get into the euro dollar just a quick reminder that the supply and demand course um private mentoring opens on the 5th of july which is eight days away i've been getting lots of emails and thank you to those who are inquiring um so with the uh, fundamental um, analysis and the supply and demand uh, mentoring we pretty much put it all together um, we go through many different um, trading strategies as well as um, weekly live calls as well so we are you know it's not just me posting videos you're actually talking to me we're going through um, you know trades not necessarily trade calls but we do talk about the fundamentals how it affects uh, price um, this is uh, the discord room and uh, also as well you get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet which gives us a uh, really kind of a clear view as to what to expect from currencies currency strength strength divergence and convergences and um, risk on and risk off sentiments so just in case you do want to have a, uh, um, a sneak peek um, into the group it opens enrollment starts uh, July the 5th and um, you can access uh, the, the group for less than a pound a day anyways getting back to the uh, technicals we've got the euro dollar and the euro dollar uh, did bounce off of this demand zone right here so we've got a bit of demand coming in limit of the move potentially and again if the Federal Reserve are looking to cut rates and the data supports the narrative you should see prices continue to uh, go to the downside the ECB at the moment are um, a bit behind the curve so ECB's Schnabel uh, warns governments not to end crisis to support early so pretty much echoing the same sentiment really as the Bank of England as well as um, the uh, the Federal Reserve to a certain degree but more um, I think they're more lagging uh, when it comes to uh, them wanting to potentially high rates. so European Central Bank Executive Board member Isabel Schnabel pledged that she uh, and her colleagues will do everything needed to sustain the economic recovery and warned governments not to undermine that by tightening fiscal policy too soon. So again, you don't want to choke off the economy uh, potentially by hiking interest rates or removing the uh, the help and the what she's talking about fiscal policy is probably more to do with uh, you know furlough schemes you really want to support the economy um, even though inflation is rising um, you know the uh, they, they, they really don't want to end it just now they want to see the data support the narrative and then they will start to look to potentially see if the economy can support um, a hike in rates so at the moment I think the path of least resistance is to the downside Again, not necessarily a currency pair that I'm really interested in, but if I was, then the dollar, the US dollar, would be the uh, the currency pair that I would look to trade, and it would be you know more to the short side. So let's see what happens here. Uh, positive sentiment around the uh, the US dollar and the Fed, kind of neutral around around the euro. Um, so again, partly resistance to the to the downside. So ultimately, what you're looking for is for prices to make lower lows a pull back into supply and then that would be supply there and then a short trade there um, or if prices do manage to get back to the one to one area then you're looking for any kind of short trades around there if there is a, a more of a hawkish shift towards Europe then um, I think you're probably looking at any kind of long trades either at this demand zone around here or down at the 117 area Moving on to the euro yen. Euro yen last week, I was saying I did want to be long on this. Didn't manage to catch the uh, catch the low. But although the although Europe are you know probably maybe lagging behind the curve a little bit, I do think that they're in a better place than the Japanese yen. So for me, ultimately, I want to get um, long on this currency pair. There is demand here as well. I'll delete. Uh, probably this one make the chart a bit cleaner so there is definitely demand in and around this zone um, this one starting from the 131 um, area and uh, when you have such a large zone one of the things that you can do is break it down with support and resistance 
it's because right it's not one or the other you use you, what you really want to do is use both um, as confluence the reason why is because we understand that uh, other traders use support and resistance right so not only do we have demand so for example price was a bargain in and around this area but for more precision we understand that there's going to be at certain support levels right this being resistance this being support there's going to be technical traders getting involved in and around this area here just buying technical levels right that's what traders tend to do not understanding which way they should be trading from a fundamental perspective so it adds to the supply and demand equation if we understand fundamentally that we should be buying here and then technical analysis traders look for certain zones as well and they start to place orders to the upside the question becomes why is there going to be more supply in this area than demand yeah, or why is there likely to be more demand in this area than supply? Again, nobody knows exactly where the market is going to turn, but it's all about prob you know being the probabilities of one thing happening over another. So one of the one of the techniques we do use out of probably about five or six uh, confluences is also the addition of uh, support and resistance with supply and demand zone. And a little secret, in fact, supply and sorry support and resistance right are past supply and demand zones right i've got videos on my youtube channel if you haven't searched for it support and resistance are past supply and demand zones that have been projected into the future it's just the way that it's been traded right supply and demand and uh, support and resistance looks different but they're actually the same um in fact i'll just see if i can find the uh, the video in fact i'll put it i'll try and put it in the um in the link in the description box and you can have a look at the uh, um, at that, that, that video anyways moving on um, actually not yet Japanese yen risk off you're looking for any kind of short trades back up into this zone here before looking at any kind of short trades if not you're looking for lower highs and lower lows to be made before uh, prices pull back so what I mean by that is if we uh, you know, get rid of all this <clears throat> in fact not all of that we just go back right so if we do get lower low lower high or lower lows right you're looking for a pullback that would create supply and then you're looking for uh, a, a sell trade in and around this area here but again you're looking for more risk off sentiment to come into the market moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and uh, price did actually again accurately bounce off of this uh, demand zone right here um, again I'm not a fan of this currency pair simply because you've got two um, uh, currency pairs that are you know looking to potentially hike rates soon I think the Australian dollar probably just a bit more ahead of the dollar so if my bias if I did have a bias it would be to the upside so any kind of pullbacks to to that demand zone for me is a buying opportunity um, selling opportunity up into this uh, supply zone right here before looking at any kind of sell trades or if prices do make again lower lows you're looking for a pullback into that zone before looking at getting short uh, moving on to the Aussie yen and the Aussie yen um, again a nice zone mark this out last week again support and resistance so this basically illustrates the point right so you've got support and resistance within that wide demand zone and then look what happens prices bounced off of that support zone um, and went to the upside right for me I'm interested in this pair um, long this pair uh, because they are pretty much diametrically opposed commodity currencies like the Australian dollar do well in a risk on environment yeah and the Japanese yen will tend not to tend to do well in a risk on environment so um, for me commodity currencies over uh, safe haven currencies and a risk on environment all days so long trades it is I've been saying that for a while this was a bit of a uh, quite a large liquidity hunt um, but we've seen prices bounce if you get a move pretty much back down into this zone around here for me that is another you know entry for a continued long trade um, as long as risk remains on if you do want to get short in and around these areas I'd probably say the 8550 uh, the highs of this area would be the uh, the uh, the best area to look for any kind of a uh, short trade within this wide area of um, of supply as you have a bit of resistance 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 in and around these areas 
there. And finally looking at gold, and gold is really like the uh, dollar this week, <clears throat> I think is waiting for a bit of a catalyst. Um, uh, the dollar did really didn't move and neither did gold, I think uh, continued a potential continued gold sell-off, um, which and this is really driven by, again, the, the hawkish Federal Reserve, um, will be dependent upon uh, inflation. For example, if you do think that inflation is going to get out of hand <coughs> and... Um, it's not uh, transitory as the Federal Reserve say, meaning that it's, it's a just temporary inflation, then um, I think then you probably want to continue to get long on gold. But if you, if you, you know, if you, um, if you, sorry, if you, if you don't believe the Federal Reserve um, and it's temporary inflation, if you do believe that the inflation is temporary um, and the US dollar will um, want to um, uh, will control inflation, put a lid on inflation by hiking interest rates, then the effect really is for um, weaker uh, and lower gold prices because money will flow into a higher yielding asset like the uh, US dollar. And if they're looking to hike rates from, for example, 0 0.25 to potentially 0.5%, yeah, and gold doesn't pay an interest um, and also we're in a risk on environment, then um, unfortunately uh, the dollar pretty much wins and especially like I said if inflation starts to come back towards the 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 uh, the, the two percent um, target average inflation as well so we could just be seeing this range where prices have been contained between this range here this high here and this low here so you can see where the actual range is uh, contained between this 19 uh, 1920 area potentially and uh, the 16 and prices may remain within this range for a little while but let's see what happens again keep an eye on inflation also keep an eye on the u.s uh, jobs and the u.s recovery anyways guys that's it for this week um hope you guys have a great trading week and uh take care speak soon